there is something we need It's a leap of faith A step away from the comfort zone And be a little brave If you have the will and a moment to spare It's a beautiful world out there It's a beautiful world out there Welcome to our video about a beautiful hike from Calendar to Kilmahog. In this video, we will take you on a journey starting from the car park in Callander Town Centre, through lush forests and along the stunning River Teeth. This hike offers breathtaking views of the surrounding mountains and is a great way to experience the natural beauty of Scotland. So, grab your walking shoes and let's get started. As we leave Callander behind, we pass the ancient Roman fort of Boatcastle on the right. This is a well-preserved feature that was discovered in 1949. Excavations revealed that it was an original quadrant Roman fort with a rampart built on a turf base and a single ditch outside it. The fort is believed to date back to the first century and is of agricolan origin. Crop marks reveal two ditches defining some 500 feet on the east side of the fort and parts of the fort's west ramparts are still visible today. Surveys have revealed that the fort is better preserved than previously thought and has a complex occupation history. After crossing the A821, we turn left. A few hundred yards later, you'll see a small hill on your right with a large singular boulder resting on top. This is Bocastle Hill, and it's an archaeologically significant site. Although there are no cup markings on the stone, it is a glacial erratic. The Iron Age hill fort of Dunmore is located just 300 yards southwest of the boulder. The boulder is known as Samson's Stone, and it is said that it was thrown here by one of Fingalian's giants in ancient times in a competition to see who was the strongest. According to local legend, the stone was originally located on Ben Ledy, nearly three miles northwest, or Ben Lors, 21 miles to the north. As we leave the hill behind, we approach Garconze Bridge. The bridge is a two-arch rubble bridge that dates back to 1777. It was built by Peter McInnes, a mason from Creef, under the instruction of commissioners of the forfeited estates, as part of an improvement scheme to the forfeited estate of the Duke of Per after the 1745 Jacobite uprising. The bridge has a length of 11.6 metres, a width between the parapets is 3.7 metres and is currently used as a road bridge. It is an excellent example of a well-preserved 18th century bridge. We head up into Colhallen Wood. This lush forest is home to an abundance of wildlife and is a popular spot for bird watching and nature photography. The winding paths through the wood lead to perfect spots for a picnic or a quiet moment of reflection. The towering Douglas firs and ancient oak trees provide a canopy of green, making an excellent place for a summer stroll or a brisk winter hike. As we walk back into Callander, we pass the remains of Callander Castle, a strong squared building of considerable height that once stood on the south bank of the River Teeth. Though it has long been gone, the manse, built in 1868, partly occupies its site and a fragment of the castle walls may still be seen close to the manse. The property was forfeited by James I or II of Scotland and passed to Livingston, who probably repaired the castle at his accession to the earldom. A stone is still preserved over the front door of the manse, inscribed with the date 1569. Near our return to the car park, we pass the mysterious Tom Machisick, a perfectly circular mound with a level space on top, located near the bridge in Callander. Tradition says it was built in the memory of St Keswick. Some believe it to be a mot, a type of castle mound, but it remains a mystery without excavation. 